Hello, I'm Axon, a Machinations Engineer, and today I'll show you how easy it is to bring values from your Machinations diagram into your game. I'll be working with an example that Richard Fine used a couple of years ago to demonstrate how scriptable objects work. So we'll be using that workflow. The game is a simple arcade, consisting of some, ta of some tanks. I'm the blue player over there. We have a yellow tank that shoots randomly and we have a sniper tank that shoots seldomly but with high precision and it camps there all the time. So let's see what we can do with this. I'll use my file manager to copy the script of the plugin into the game. We don't have any asset store support yet but we're working on that. So now I copied the plugin into the game and Unity and Rider will start parsing the files. And since we're in Rider, let me tell you a bit about how the game works. Every brain, every tank has a brain and every brain has a certain type. What we're going to play with is the simple sniper brain. So this inherits from tank brain, which is a scriptable object. It has a think method and the think method helps it pick a target. I have here an empty diagram, which I'll turn into a simple diagram by adding a pool here. I'm going to name this shooting frequency, shooting frequency, and I'm going to give it a value of 5. Now. What I have to do is to go to the main scene and drag a prefab here. This machinations game layer prefab is how we connect to the backend. Here I will have to set my user key. Optionally I can say a uh, game name and I need a diagram token. And this I will get from here. I generate a diagram token by clicking this button and then copy it. And now I can paste it in here. Good. We're optimizing the way we're using prefabs, but for now we have two prefabs that we'll need to drag here. There's also the socket IO prefab. And the way we connect is by specifying here the URL of our test server. So let's see how this, um, how this behaves now. Um, let's see if we get anything in the console. Yes, we do have something. So we have an authorization success and we have an attempt to get some elements. There are some errors though because this game is not meant to be started with a scene directly but it's meant to be started from the menu. So I'm gonna switch back to the menu scene now since we have done the changes we wanted in the main scene. Alright, so now let's get coding. The way we connect a scriptable object to the machinations backend is by using the onEnable method. This method is called when the scriptable object is created. And we will use enroll scriptable object from the machinations game layer to enroll this, um, this object. It needs a interface, iMachinations scriptable object, and it needs a manifest. The interface, the interface will be this and the manifest will have to declare. Always nice to create some um, constants when you know you're going to be using strings. The manifest can be the manifest can be made static since uh, we are not going to use it um, every instance. It's the, always the same. It's always the same uh, uh, manifest for whatever number of instances of the scriptable objects we might have, or any object. Scriptable objects don't exactly have um, that ma that much need of inst instancing, but uh, if you use it in other situations, keep in mind that the manifest can be. Uh, static and should be static since we are only uh, connecting to a single um, diagram element. So the ma the manifest has multiple um, multiple properties, multiple uh, members. But what we're interested in this simple example is this properties to sync. 
which is a uh, list of diagram mappings. And in the list of diagram mappings, we are interested, we, we need to tell um, the machinations game layer uh, what we would like to uh, synchronize. It's nice to give it a game object property name. So let's first create the mapping and we'll give it the name we just defined there. And we will give it a diagram element ID. And that ID we will get from here, from the diagram, by looking in the pool, what ID we have here, it's 16502. We are working on improving these um, these numbers right now. This is a build version of the product and we're using some uh, weird long IDs. Um, all right. Oh, and of course we need to implement the interface. Implement missing members. All right, so the interface has two members. The init member is called whenever machinations has um, received an answer from the backend and the update is used whenever you change something in the diagram. On the init you will see that we get here a um, member called binders, an argument called binders. So we'll create a member for this one so that we can store it here because we will need it later to access whatever properties we get from the backend. And in the update function, we can um, play with this time between shots. We can say that the min value can be binders and here we can refer to this um, shooting, shooting frequency. And we'll use the same thing for the max as well, except we'll increase it with one. And here in the init, we can also call update. So let's see how this runs. Switching back to Unity, it's going to compile. And let's run it. Let's check the console as well. Hit play, no errors, usually a good sign. So the game is on. And here you can see that it does request the values and it does receive five. And the tank is over there, the red tank. It's shooting. Let's see if it's shooting with the correct frequency. Let's inspect the sniper prefab. Yes, and indeed it's five to six. But let's make it harder. Let's change it to one. Hmm. Yep. Now we got one rabbit tank here. Oh, 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 easy, easy, easy. Well, it's not rabbit yet. Now it's going to be rabbit. All right, look at the thing go. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> So yeah, this is how you can, in a couple of minutes, easily just drop in machinations into your game. And um, of course, this is a very simple example, but please stay tuned and watch some of our other videos. We will be uploading a lot more in-depth um, videos with architecture and so on. And also we are very open to optimizing things. The project is open source, so um, please feel free to contribute and to um, come with advice and tell us about your use cases, what works, what doesn't, what you would like us to improve. We are very, very, very keen on collaborating uh, with the community to make this a great, great tool. Thanks for watching.